Tech Jacks. This video, SCCM applications. Uh, why? Uh, because some folks might want to know. And eventually, you might want to look at a video that shows you or demonstrates to you how that can be done. So let's jump right into it. I'm going to create an application, which is a new form of uh, distributing software in SCCM 2012. Um, it allows us to actually do a little bit more things with it in terms of how we deploy it to users or systems or, you know, all that good stuff. Um, you can um, read about it um, in some of the uh, links that I'll place below. Uh, but first and foremost, I want to go ahead and go ahead and get the actual install files that we're going to need. So um, in this particular video, I'm going to do an installation of uh, Java and I'm going to set my timer here to make sure that I do this in a reasonable amount of time. I guess I should have did this beforehand, but you know, this is what happens when you try to do it. Spur the moment, live, whatever. So we're going. So I already downloaded the Java files we're going to use um, here in the Java folder on the desktop on my VM machine, PC001. I have three versions of Java. Um, one of them, uh, 745 did come out. I didn't get that one. I just wanted to show a quick demonstration between 725 and 740. Uh, so the uh, EXE we have here, we're going to actually launch that so that we get an extraction of the actual MSI file that we're going to need in order to actually create our application. Um, launching Java and getting to the actual welcome string allows us to um, do that. Uh, what we'll do is go ahead and go to the app data folder. And we're going to go up one folder to local low and to the sun folder and Java. And there we have our Java 7 update for, uh, 25 files. What we want to do is actually make these available to our SCCM server so that when we create our package, the content will be created and updated to our distribution point. So what I'm going to do is navigate to my explorer and I have a shared uh, network drive here that gives me access to a folder that the SCCM server has. So I'm going to just paste the actual files there. And what that would allow me to do is get to my SCCM box. As you can just see, I just flipped straight over. Um, I'm going to go ahead and find those files. So that's the shared drive. There's Java. And there are the files that we need. I'm going to copy these onto the actual SCCM machine. And I have a software folder here, and here's my path to it. It's not the UNC path, but you'll see that in a second. <coughs> and what I want to do is create a folder here, Java, get my caps on, Java uh, 725, right? And I'm going to go ahead and put our content there. So with uh, that being done, I just wanted to say, uh, you know, with these videos and these, you know, quick little things here, you know, there's probably going to be other people who did them before who have content out there before. But the thing that I want to do is actually make it so that, you know, you guys are, you know, um, hearing it or seeing it from somebody that, you know, you're going to be able to communicate with and probably does it in a way that's more easily absorbed. So what we've done is we've grabbed the data files and we copied those files to our SCCM software folder. And what we want to go ahead and do now is we want to go ahead to our software library into the applications uh, selection uh, uh, application. And from here, what it allow? I got stuck. I'm like, what do you call these things? It's a folder, but it has like some application. Like, what is it called? Like task or something. But CMO one is our server. I'm going to go to our sources share. And I'm going to go to software updates and to our Java 725 folder. And with applications, you don't need to just uh, select the UNC path, but you also have to pick the actual uh, MSI or EXE that you're actually selecting when you're going to create your actual application. Now, the way applications work is that they actually take some content from the particular MSI or EXE, and it actually uh, gives you a little bit of a jump start on actually creating the application in the form of uh, switches. And you can see that here, I highlighted that MSI there to uh, let you guys see that the application actually uh, placed this command prompt 
uh, this will be a command prompt that runs that actually initializes the install it already put the quiet switch in there so there are going to be some things that happen with applications that allow us to actually you know uh, not do as much work as we had to do like in 2007 I'm going to just place in some content here so we have the, the software version that we're using and we're going to select it to install for your system because we don't want to actually um, apply it to users which is one of the actual things that applications allow us to do now uh, they allow us to actually um, and we always could have but it was not very um, beneficial to actually deploy to users because if a user switched to a machine and uh, that machine uh, wasn't allowed or authorized to have a piece of software then if that software installed for that user on that machine then you might run into licensing issues so it was kind of um, one of the things that you didn't do unless you had a very controlled and very meticulously handled environment uh, applications allow users to actually go ahead and uh, select a primary device so that if you do push to users it'll only go to the device that is their primary so that's one of the benefits of applications so we have our new application here and we need to distribute our actual content that those files that we have we need to distribute those to the distribution point in a form that SCCM can push to the users or the users computers because we're pushing to computers uh, so I'll click a couple of nexus here I'm going to select my distribution points which is my site server and next and there you go so I'm going to hit refresh real quick and we should see that it's a yellow in progress uh, application um, that's being distributed to my distribution point this is going to go very fast because um, I'm on site and it's just a very small file so uh, we're going to need to create a collection so that we can place the machines that we want to have this version in and I've already taken the liberty to create a collection uh, to save a little bit of time all I need to do is actually place some computers into the actual collection so that we can get a deployment so the PC that I have here was PC 001 and to confirm that I'm going to show you real quick that's my computer name we're going to do our search here and we're going to add this machine to the collection we have zero member count but in just a moment uh, we'll have a uh, one update in terms of the resource count uh, there we go and we have PC 001 so we've added PC 001 to the collection for the Java update uh, 725 I've created the application uh, it's very fast as you can see and obviously there will be times where you want to get a lot more detailed and um, uh, very uh, granular about the way that you want something to be pushed but this is just a basic application push using applications I'm going to go back to the software library and in our applications we see here that it's green now so the content has been distributed to our distribution point and from there all we need to do is actually deploy that to our group now before I do that though I did want to actually make a change to the switches that we were using because um, sometimes when you install Java it has some default settings that can interfere with the way that you're managing your systems on the domain if you don't have um, the installation method um, I guess uh, fully fleshed out the way that you want it so what we're going to do here is we're going to add a couple of switches in order to um, turn off auto updates turn off the user being able to update Java so we can keep everybody on the same version and to make sure that when we do update or do go to a new version that everybody has the same uh, starting place so I'm going to go ahead and configure this auto update check we're going to set that to zero we're going to set our Java update to zero and we're going to set um, our ability for our users to see the actual update tab to zero uh, we might as well accept the uh, user terms and agreements and we're going to actually also set this to no restart because uh, we want to suppress any boots reboots so we have it installing for the system whether the user is on and off and to be hidden in the background um, sometimes you can set new um, uh, I guess resources or you can set different uh, 
options available on a particular update or uh, application based on your environment and what you need to do. Uh, this one is going to just be a basic one. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and go back to my application and it's already updated I just wanted to update the actual content so I'm going to go back to our deployment types right click here and go to update content um, so I want this to have the latest switches that I just created uh, so that when we actually push this to a collection into a device that it has the switches that I just set so that the updates are disabled okay um, so what I'm going to do here is get on this virtual machine the PC 001 and I'm going to actually go ahead and launch the software center and launch the configuration manager um, properties so the configuration manager properties they allow for me to uh, I guess um, initialize whether or not I want the machine to do a machine evaluation policy doing an application deployment evaluation cycle should kick off the actual install or the pull down of the actual content from the DP I'm going to run uh, user policy retrieval machine policy retrieval and application and uh, deployment evaluation cycle to uh, grab the content and to uh, view the status of it and installing uh, what I want to do first is just make sure that I have everything set up um, I'm still missing my deployment because I didn't deploy so I'm going to go ahead and deploy this to that collection really fast uh, like I said it was already built and a user was already or users machine was already placed and I keep saying users now it's already um, on a distribution point I'm going to set it to require so it installs automatically I'm going to get next we're going to install as soon as possible so that as soon as it sees the content and it's available it's going to start downloading it and I'm going to set it to install once it reaches the deadline time and since we set it to as soon as possible the deadline time is as soon as it sees it so it's going to automatically start installing right away so our deployment is now active um, it's going to our collection in our software folder for Java uh, Java update 725 we have one member in there PC 001 so what we're going to do here is go ahead and run the application deployment evaluation cycle machine retri retrieval and the user policy I'm um, usually for this one the application one would suffice but I'm in the habit of using those three because of the environment I am and that um, a lot of times um, the user policy actually allows it to kick off a lot faster when I do use that so I ran the policy retrieval and nothing happened yet so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to our logs on our C drive in our Windows folder and our CCM logs and I'm going to check the cast I have to see them trace already installed and what I want to do is see what's going on right so it's currently 413 and that has a last mention of 403 so uh, let me find my configuration manager again I'm just going to go ahead and run those actions again maybe the content just wasn't updated on my DP fast enough to have this process um, oh okay um, it happened in the background uh, I when we was at this installation status screen before we didn't have the update uh, it installed it didn't give us any prompts so I must have set it to not display the notifications that was a mistake on my part um, but again it did go through what we can check is the app discovery to actually see when it, did it pull down some content and it did pull down some content as you can see we were looking at 413 it's 4.14 now. It pulled down some content. It discovered an application was available. And it ran that application. So uh, I want to take the opportunity to actually look into logs and, and do a video like that. But for now, that's how you create a Java uh, application, an application in SCCM 2012. Uh, what I would like to do is actually extend this into a supersedence of an application so that new versions of Java are updated. So that video is coming up next. Uh, thanks, everybody. This is Tech Jacks. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, see you.